Um, so next up will be uh, Chen Wook uh, talking about uh, energy loss in the low virtuality phase. Uh, could you please share your slides? Okay, I see them. And now they're full screen. Full screen, they look, uh, look good. Uh, so please uh, go ahead. Uh, Fred, we can't hear you yet though. Uh, uh, you're still, so your, screen, your slides look good, but you're still muted. Okay, looks like you're unmuted. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, there we go. Yeah. Can you can you see my mouse point and? Uh, yes, we can. Great. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm Chanuk from Wayne State University, and um, I want to continue the discussion from the previous speaker Amit, and uh, but now I'm going to focus more um, on the low virtuality um, phase of jet uh, jet energy loss. Yeah, so um, as Amit discussed uh, in his presentation, jets in heavy ion collisions experience multiple stages depending on different phases. So to give you um, a general picture of jet evolution, jet evolved from a high virtuality to low virtuality, and also at, at the same time, uh, they evolved from high energy and uh, from, from high energy to lower energies. So the JSK framework um, incorporates this multiple uh, stage jet evolution model where one can apply PPR or metal shower for high virtuality phase. And one can choose ABT or Martini for uh, low virtuality phase. And the switching between these two phases um, is given by uh, this switching virtuality q which is uh, a free parameter in the multi-stage model. And I will talk about this free, uh, free primary at the end of my presentation again. And so this high virtuality phase is already well described by Amit. And now I will focus on this low virtuality phase um, before um, hadronization process. So, um, so what happens in the low virtuality phase? Because the virtuality of a parton is already small enough um, these partons are considered uh, nearly on shell and the pseudocurve calculation is no longer applied. Instead, one can evolve um, these on shell particles using this Boltzmann type of equation with time order shower. And we have two, um, here we have two uh, um, uh, splitting corners and uh, we have uh, one elastic corner and one inelastic corner and we consider the scattering between uh, interactions between um, partons in the hard shower and the parton in the soft uh, in the soft medium. And we often um, use high energy approximation because at this limit, um, the perturbative QCD makes the calculations a lot easier. And in this region, um, we can choose we can see two different uh, uh, features. One is the LPM effect. So um, when a jet shower parton is scattered, it gets a small amount of um, virtuality and it radiates a gluon. However, if there are a multiple, uh, multiple scatterings, uh, these radiated uh, gluons uh, become coherent to each other due to longer formation time. So what you can see at the end of the day uh, is a single radiation. So the overall, um, the suppression rate is uh, the, the, the radiation rate is suppressed because of this helping effect. Another important thing uh, in this high energy limit is the running coupling constant is small so that uh, we can use uh, the leading order approximation where um, we, we only need to consider this, uh, the leading order diagram to evaluate uh, those interaction kernels. So one, uh, one of the low virtuality shower available in Jetscape is linear Boltzmann transport or shortly LBT. So the, this LBT model is a Monte Carlo simulation to solve uh, the linearized Boltzmann transport uh, equation. 
This was developed by Xinyang Wang and his collaborators at LBN and CCNG in China. So uh, the linear light means um, they use uh, the linear approximation where jet pattern density and jet induced medium response are small so that one can ignore the interactions between jet patterns or interactions between uh, the recoils. The details of uh, recoils uh, will be discussed later uh, by Yasuki Tachibana. And the LBT can deal with the evolution for uh, light quarks and gluons and uh, heavy quarks. So the elastic scattering kernel in LBT can be obtained by evaluating these type of uh, leading order Feynman diagrams. Here, one and two are the incoming and outgoing uh, patterns in the uh, jet shower. And three and four are corresponding soft particles in the QJP. And what's shown here is uh, the scattering between quarks and quarks, but it is also possible to have uh, the scattering between quarks and gluons or gluon gluon scatterings. So uh, the, the matrix element um, of, of from these diagrams can, uh, enters here. Um, and by integrating over all possible uh, momenta of two, three, and four, you can get the scattering rate uh, for uh, P1 here uh, for this incoming uh, JHR parton. And the total elastic rate uh, is the sum over all possible scattering channels like QQ or QG and GG. Um, and the, the probability of having uh, one elastic scattering for a given delta t is the, the total rate multiplied by the delta t. And this equation is valid only if the right hand side uh, is smaller than one. Otherwise, uh, this cannot be interpreted as the probability. Uh, for the inelastic uh, rate, we evaluate these kinds of diagrams where a jet short pattern scatter of a soft pattern in, uh, in the QGP and radiates a gluon. And in this diagram, the scaling point uh, and the scaling point is somewhat ambiguous within the formation time of this gluon radiation. And from these diagrams, one can compute the number of um, medium induced gluon radiation. And this is given by delta T uh, multiplied by integrated gluon radiation spectrum. And this gluon, uh, gluon spectrum can be obtained from higher trees formalism, where this uh, P of X is the mod medium modified uh, splitting function. And here this tau F is the formation time of the radiation. And you can see that uh, this formation time is proportional to the energy of the, uh, the parton and uh, the momentum fraction uh, taken by the radiated gluon. And because LVT allows multiple radiation at a given time step, the number of uh, the radiation obeys uh, uh, this Poisson distribution. And the final uh, expression for the probability of having uh, gluon radiation uh, uh, can be expressed as this equation, where um, if this n of g is small enough, then one can, uh, the, uh, this expression can be reduced as simply uh, n of g. Now let me move on to the second energy loss um, uh, in, in low energy, low virtual phase, which is Martini. So uh, Martini is uh, a modular algorithm for relativity treatment of heavy ion interactions developed by um, Bion, Charles, and Sanyong at McGill University. So uh, basically Martini solves um, this following McGill Amy evolution equation using Monte Carlo simulations. So here, the left-hand side um, is the time differential probability of having a particle of momentum P. And in the right-hand side, uh, this gamma uh, is the transition rate for a particle of momentum P plus K radiating a gluon of momentum K. So it, uh, the pattern becomes, uh, 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 it, its momentum becomes uh, P after this transition. So this first term uh, represents the gain term and the second term uh, is the loss term. 
And in Martini, this transition rate includes uh, two to two inelastic process and inelastic process uh, from AV. And I, I will skip this uh, inelastic, uh, elastic process because, uh, because this is quite similar to what has been uh, included in LVT. And now I will explain how AME is calculated in Martini. So uh, Martini takes the AME formalism for the radiative process. Uh, AME stands for uh, Peter Arnold and Guy Moore and Lawrence Yaffe. And the AME formalism is based on the assumption that the temperature of the system is asymptotically high and the coupling constant it therefore is small, smaller than one. And in this limit, um, they consider this uh, the, the, the leading order diagram for the gluon radiation. However, um, at this high energy limit, the multiple radiations from the multiple scatterings are co coherent to each other due to uh, the LPM effect. And the authors uh, of any uh, paper, uh, they verified that um, this interference between uh, multiple, uh, multiple scatterings can con contribute to the leading of the diagram. So this means that uh, one needs uh, this resummation of all possible scattering diagrams shown here. So luckily, um, the resummation can be expressed um, as this expression here. So we have one bare splitting and we have an additional three uh, terms, uh, which uh, each of which has an extra gluon at different uh, places. So this, uh, this is the, the corresponding integral equation with the solution of F um, and this H, yeah, uh, this H is uh, how, uh, this H re represent how collinear between two final state particles. And this delta E is uh, the energy difference between the initial state and the final state particles. And this C uh, is the scattering cross-section. And there are three terms on the right-hand side and each of them corresponds to each of these diagrams here. And if you solve these equations, then you get uh, this gluon radiation rate here where P is the uh, momentum of the incoming parton and K is the radiated gluon's momentum and now you can see this part. Um, so this part is the splitting function uh, in the medium and this part can be solved numerically. So, um, so far I have talked about um, low virtual departure shower uh, and two uh, available models in the JetScape framework. One is LBT, another one is LBT. Now let me talk about uh, how these uh, models are implemented in the Monte Carlo simulations. Um, so instead of virtual order shower in the high virtual phase, now we have time order shower. So I, I will go through uh, step by step. So what you are given uh, is the uh, list of patterns in the jet shower. So you pick one pattern and first calculate the total probability of having any kinds of interactions. This includes all possible um, uh, process of elastic process and inelastic processes. And the number should, uh, should be smaller than one. Now using a random number, um, you decide uh, random number between zero and one, you decide whether an interaction process happens and which process happens. And if it turns out that nothing happens, then you move on to the next particle in the list. And if you decide a certain process happens, then you need, now you, what you need to do is you need to sample the kinematics of the final state particles. For example, um, you need to sample the momentum transfer Q for elastic process or momentum fraction X for uh, the, in, the inelastic process. To, uh, to sample a new momentum, you need a differential trend transition rate and the rejection method with envelope function is commonly used for the sampling process. Uh, note that uh, the rejection method uh, was discussed by Sangyong um, earlier this week. And finally, uh, you need to update the position and the momentum of the finite state particles based on the sampling. 
um, now we are done with uh, this one particle. Then uh, we, uh, we just pick another particle in the list and repeat the step from one to four until all particles are processed. Then we move on to the next time step um, because this is time order shower. And you keep doing this until uh, the end of the evolution. So um, uh, you know, you, you, uh, please note that the details of this Monte Carlo procedure could be different depending on the nature of the uh, energy loss models. However, this is very uh, typical way of implementing uh, the Monte Carlo method for time order shower. Now, uh, before I finish my presentation, I would like to talk about uh, the parameter Q0 uh, in this, uh, in this uh, JSK model and the distinct effect of low virtual shower in uh, jet observables. So you this- have about five minutes left. Okay, yeah, thank you. So this picture shows the switching time between matter and, uh, matter and martini shower when we apply a different switching virtuality uh, q naught from 1 GV to 3 GV. So the initial energy um, of, uh, of uh, the, the initial energy of parton is either 50 GV or 200 GV. And this plot is as a function of final um, energy uh, from zero to uh, 50 or zero to 100, 200. So when we set uh, Q0 uh, to 1 GV, in most cases, the switching time is comparable to the size of the QGP created in uh, um, LHC. On the other hand, if you set it to 3 GV, then uh, the switching time is older of like one for me, or um, in most case, uh, in extreme case, it's like uh, 10 for me. And another thing one can notice is that the uh, the, the particles with higher energies uh, stays, stays more uh, in the higher virtual phase, while the particle with lower energy uh, immediate, immediately moves to the lower virtual phase. So um, what value should we choose uh, for the switching virtual T? Um, it has to be small number definitely, but it's not easy to answer because uh, the higher virtual power and low virtual shower are not, clear, not cleanly separated from each other. So one way uh, to deal with uh, this uncertainty is to make it uh, a free parameter. And one to three GB is the typical range uh, that we can choose from our um, K equations. So finally, this picture on the right hand side shows the effect of low virtual shower on top of the high virtual shower. So this is uh, the nuclear modification factor, RIA, for heavy quarks using matter only and matter plus LVT with uh, switching virtual T with of Q, uh, uh, 2, 2 GV. Now you can see uh, this RIA is largely suppressed at low, uh, lower PT when you attach LVT compared to the case of matter only. This is because particle with lower energy enters low virtual phase earlier time like uh, shown here. Um, and they stay longer time in this phase and lose more energy due to uh, the LVT shower. And this is why we see uh, this large suppression due to LVT while the high PD particles are less sensitive to, uh, the, to the LVT phase. Um, so thank you very much uh, for listening. Uh, this is my, uh, the end of my slide. Um, now, if you have questions, um, uh, you can post it on the Slack channel or you can ask directly here. Thank you. Very good. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any questions, uh, any pressing ones to ask right now? Okay, uh, I see one uh, question uh, from uh, Rolf. Please go yeah, ahead. Um... Thank you for this talk. I wanted to ask on your, uh, I think it was the last uh, slide, number 13, mm -hmm. where you uh, compare matter versus matter and OBT. Right. Um, I, I noticed that the, the value of QS is different for these two, uh, two models. Do you touch upon uh, why that is? Right, so when you have better only, um, 
So it means there is no energy loss be, uh, between below this uh, this parameter, and this in this case you have a metal shower above two GB and below two GB you have LVT, and the reason why we set um, uh, this switching virtuality to one GB if if you have one, only metal shower, um, the reason is because. Um, so there is uh, a hard coded um, value in LVT uh, in, in matter uh, energy loss model. Um, this is because Sudako form factor can go below um, this one GB. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, th this is the uh, lower limit. Uh, the Sudako form factor can exist. Um, and and, and in, in this case, we choose this parameter uh, as a free parameter to um, uh, to explore uh, which parameter can uh, fit better in in our calculations. Um, okay, thank you. Okay, uh, so I don't see their hands up right now. Uh, so I think we'll transition from here. Thank you very much for this uh, for this nice uh, talk here. Heard quite a bit very quickly. Um, so let me pause the recording.